Um, I wanted to just delve a bit deeper into that and have has it always been an enjoyable experience in terms of like <laughs> <laughs> or like what has the experience been in marrying or just in performing or expressing yourself artistically and showcasing or maybe just being a queer person how has that experience been for you. I've got something to say. <laughs> I think like being in spaces like the Tit and the Rat, especially in Sydney, it's like amazing. Mm. And I, I started rapping as like something I really wanted to do. Like I, I have such a passion in music. And then as I started, like I say this with humility, but like as I started growing a bit, I started having to be in spaces and perform with people that I wouldn't fuck with during the day. You know, and I'm, these are very like cis, het, straight spaces. And even though that I want to be my own artist, I'm a hip hop artist from Western Sydney, which also links to the drill rappers in Western Sydney. And then when I'm put on these articles, that it's like the top Western Sydney rappers at the moment, and I have the name, but I don't have a photo. Yes. Because, you know, people that are scrolling through and they're like, yes, yes, oh, cool, cool, cool. Maybe Jamaica Moana sounds cool, but they don't want to be like, oh, fuck, oh, you know? So yes. that's, like, something that I shift. So, and it ha it's happened a lot this year. I've been blessed with so many, like, bookings and all of that. But it's, like, I'll have a beautiful time here at the tit. It's, like, I'm so chill now because it's a breath of fresh air being here, you know? It's, it's safe. But then, like, tomorrow I'll have to be in, like... Do some like campaign shoot where it's just all white cis women and they're just like, can you get he him that thing? Yeah, the pro. Yes. Uh, she when we what? Did a panel. We love when pride. We did panel, yeah. You know, I'm like, babe, fuck, all good. You know, but always chop them down. You know, there's never a space where you can't let your voice be heard. And I love my new obsession is taking over cis head spaces. Yeah. <laughs> like I just I love doing it. I think I had, I remember we had an experience where we were on a panel. Oh, but I think you, you came and it was me and Xander on a panel and there was one lady who just kept mis yeah. gendering you. Yeah. And it was so uncomfortable, but then I think it was, it was nice because of we, all the community people were there and we were like, correct yourself in the most shadiest way. And it was funny, but I think, yeah, I can see especially now that we work together, how we have to band together and basically push through all these spaces where they are, they don't even get yeah, who we are, what we absolutely. are. And like, they're like, oh, what's that? Yeah. And we're like, look, let us in, yeah. have manners, thank you. And these are the people who want change in the music industry. Yes. And they're, they're, they're the ones, they're claiming for it. And exactly. they're like, they can't even foresee change within their like social construct of gender. Yeah. yeah. Big conversation, but it's like, yeah. fuck up. You know, when I'm when these things happen and someone's like this, when that happened, I'm just like, babe, fuck up. Like Yeah, we were come on. I with, with I'm just yeah. I can't yeah. You, you just get tired of, of it some days. Some days you don't want to be the educator. You it just want to walk in, be. literally. Yeah, yeah. Period. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying you shouldn't have to be the educator. I think like relatable in the sense as a DJ, as my profile's gone and I'm playing less, like I still love playing queer events, but playing more mainstream, cis, het, white events with all the bros, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and so I think a lot of these spaces claim change, but they're not, it's all words and no action. And it's, they don't center or prioritize safety. And so it's so dangerous for us to be in these spaces, but they want to use us to sort of demonstrate how progressive they are, how ahead of the times they are. And it's some BS and it's so unfair because we shouldn't have to hold this labor where we're now not only like having to play, but also educating others. Um, and, and just on that, I wanted to also say it's very hard and difficult for us as like, well, in the music scene, I'll probably like come over to you for the artistic scene where they pay money. Mm, yeah, you want like, to get a bag. I got bills to pay. Yeah, like <laughs> these white spaces that actually don't understand anything that we're about have the money to back it up. Mm. And like we'll come into the queer spaces and they want to pay our rate. Whereas the other spaces we know have a bigger bag. And so we're fighting to like really show, like, prove ourselves in those spaces because we know 
we, we need to make a living out of this. But then it's like playing the game, like how hard, like I'll come home from like a gig where it definitely did a lot for like say my profile, whatever the hell that means, a lot for like my bag and be physically and kind of like emotionally drained from having to work the room, having to just code switch low key and then almost kind of like push out my queerness mm. because it's like, oh, like they're like kind of, they'll brush it off and then I have to like push it out and be like, no, 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 like I'm queer. Like remember that I'm queer first. And it's like at, at, at home in Western Sydney, like I'm not, definitely not this pussy, like pussy, pussy can't like when I'm going home. You know what I mean? So then when I'm going into these spaces, I'm faking, like not faking it, but I'm definitely like pushing it out and like having, to, and it's just draining. Like, do you find that? Um, to an extent, yeah. I feel like I've gotten to a point where I'm not, I don't know, if straight people want to have thoughts about me, I'm just like, all right, whatever, bro. I'm just yeah. here to play and let me do what I need to do and I'm going to go home. But I do think it's exhausting, absolutely, having to sort of, yeah, engage and interact with people that you probably wouldn't with, like, otherwise. But I think it's because no matter how much t um, things change, there's still a level of invisibility for, you know, white cis males or, you know, like... People can see that there's this change and that, you know, um, people of colour, queer people have a, you know, different expectation in society. But I think we're still tired because it's still invisible. People don't know why we're tired. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot to do with that, the fact that we're in social spaces, which means we have to constantly perform. And when we go home, we're like, shit, I gave a, too much of myself that night. I promised too much of myself. And I think over the years of growing up as an artist as well, have noticed that I need to put some cultural safety protocols in place for myself to, you know, to protect myself. Boundaries. Boundaries are gifts that we give to other people and gifts that we receive from other people. So I honestly think that that has shaped my art practice in the last at least two to three years where every single day I practice not to give too much of myself. And that is to control my adrenaline, to control my nervous system. Like every single day I practice to be a better artist, if that makes sense, throughout my video work, throughout my performance. And I think, you know, even on stage today, we all have adrenaline of some kind. I need to, I, I to, for my own safety, need to keep that at a point where, or at a level where it doesn't, I don't give too much of myself so I go home and feel completely drained to not be with myself, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, yeah. And, and just like the question, I was genuinely <coughs> just interested in like how it's been for you yeah. with your artistic expression and then being queer, like how have yeah. you had that experience? Yeah, totally. And I think um, I do a lot of performances in, art, in the art world, which isn't, you know, it is queer, but it's not queer, and it's like, you know, you get a lot of... I don't know, I did some performance with Anastasia, actually, with at some art fair thing at First Draft, and I didn't know a single person in the crowd, which is unusual for me, but I love that as an artist, because I get to... Um, I, there's another questioning there. I get to I get to take a risk and throw in a... Like, you know, cross your boundaries as a cis-het normative crowd and make you question something and then move through your space, take up your space, just exactly like you're saying, Jamaica, like I echo that. And I think, you know, we do it really differently. You're, you know, you have a very different practice to me, but we often, we do it in a similar, you know, like, you know, we know ourselves, you, you know, you come too close, but yeah, I think it's a protection. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm interested, but what about you? Like, how has it? That's why I'm here to talk. <laughs> um, but I, so, I did my research on um, Salote because of. I love that you don't have social social media. I, I do. Well, I I um couldn't find a handle. Couldn't find an Instagram. Um, it's it Soul Glow. Yeah, Is it? I love that. It was from you know the hair product, yeah. but I, but without the U S O L G L O. Well, I, well, I did some research and I um, found out that I had actually gone to like one of your 
works. Oh. So I went to Campbelltown Art Centre to listen to Two Brownish Girls podcast and then oh, went cool. into um, the Vale Ni Songo. Songo, yeah. Songo, yeah. And, and that <laughs> was your work with Danita Holmey. Is that how you say uh, it? Hume. Hume. Mm-hmm. And Dolce Stewart. Dolce. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Dolce Stewart. Yeah. And can we talk about that? Because of its... Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'll get you to explain. Uh, um, so the Vale Nisongo, which just translates to Meeting House, um, was a part of a show called Marama Ndina, which came from the re- revitalization of Fijian female identities. We used to be... Um, we used to have these um, rites of passage that included the tattoo. And um, so one of the ideas was we'll um, make a Valeni Songo, a meeting house. We'll make a space within the gallery for Pacific communities because the gallery can be harsh. Um, and we want our first audience is like, you know, um, Pacific Islander communities living in the diaspora, especially because it's, at, you know, in Western Sydney. And um, so they're like, Salati, you can do that. And I was like, okay. <clears throat> and decided that it would be just like my grandpa's house. So I was having on a whole nother level a nostalgia moment. But actually, you know, I was like, because I was sort of like, okay, I hope everybody else likes it. And when all of the other artists were all Fiji and from New Zealand and Australia, Fiji, and... Um, came into it, they all had that because it's like like a general like Fijian village kind of house. Yeah, even in Tonga, it's, it's yeah, basically all, the same. Yeah, yeah. And so like all of a sudden everyone decorated it and I was like, yes, it's it's the space. We, and even on the opening night, like um, we had a ceremony that was like a carver ceremony, but then um, all the leftover carver, like a whole bunch of people went in and started just drinking carver in the house to the point that like the staff were like, we've got it, we should have left like, <laughs> you know, an hour ago. And it's like, they're like, yeah, but we can't until you finish the bowl. Like that's, <laughs> it's actually a rule. But then I saw this young guy sneaking in a whole other jug of water. But the point of that is just like, <laughs> It was for the community and you don't know until that moment whether the community is sort of like into it or not. 